Yes, yes, keep going there. We're combating global warming here in the office. Speaking of which, according to my research, 234 million years ago, gigantic pulses of carbon dioxide erupted into the atmosphere from volcanoes at the bottom of the ocean. Who knew? This massive underwater fart resulted in intense bouts of global warming, ocean acidification, mass extinction, and a barrage of extreme rainfall and mountain flattening mega monsoons that are still visible in the rocks. You know, geological evidence all around the world. Everything was covered in red mud. Wow, what a time to be alive that must have been. It was called the Carnian Pluvial Episode. Carnian Pluvial Episode. You know, that sounds like what happens to me when I bry at home. I'm sorry, darling. I had a, uh, a Carnian Pluvial Episode. And she's like, fuck you, man. You burned those chops again. Anyway. The Carnian Pluvial episode wiped out the early inhabitants of the Earth and ushered in the era of the dinosaurs. Now listen, I'm no climatologist, but I'm told that this entire episode I'm describing was kicked off by global warming of only about 4 to 7 degrees Celsius. That's right, roughly the same magnitude predicted for our own world, the one we're living in now, under the so-called business-as-usual carbon emission scenario, you know, the one where we burn all the fossil fuels. Makes you think a little bit, doesn't it? So wind forward to today. A different kind of dinosaur roams the Earth. The most powerful creatures have sidekicks who are even dumber and nastier than themselves. Mm-hmm. Humans are now living in what we call the geological epoch of our own making. Scientists are calling it the Anthropocene epoch. Where some history, you know, epochs in Earth's past stretch for more than 40 million years, Scientists, human ones, of course, have decided this chapter started maybe, I don't know, 75 years ago when we invented the motor car. Cars need petrol, and of course, petrol comes from oil. Oil, of course, was formed millions and millions of years ago when a shit ton of tiny plants and animals, you know, like algae and zooplankton, got stuck under multiple layers of sand and mud. And some of the least attractive parts of the planet now have oil under them. But you know, as the old joke goes, Channing Tatum, like Channing Tatum, everything is more interesting when it's rubbed up in oil. So just think about it. How much attention would we be paying to countries like Nigeria if they had no oil? Or Saudi Arabia, for that matter. Not much. Anyway, the oil market is in a scramble mode this week because someone, I don't know, maybe the Iranians, it seems, bombed the Saudi Aramco facility at Abkaik. How do we pronounce this word? Abkaik, Abkaik, Abkak, Afkak. Yes, well, anyway, that missile and drone attack caused the halt of about 5.7 million barrels a day of Saudi oil production. I mean, look at the photos there. Have you ever seen an uglier place? I mean, that is a physical environment so ugly, not even putting an oil refinery on top of it could make it any uglier. In fact, it looks a little better than it did before. At least there'd be some shade there, you know, like under the pipes. So if you were like wandering in the desert and you saw Abkak on the horizon, you'd run over there for some help. Hmm. Anyway, the United States hates the Iranians and so do the Saudis. So now those two countries are big buddies. Trump loves Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, otherwise known as MBS. And don't forget, the Saudis are just horrible. A few months ago, they captured that opposition journalist, a Saudi citizen for fuck's sakes, his name was Kamal Khashoggi, and they cut him up with a bone saw in their embassy in Istanbul, and then dissolved his body in acid. Lovely people, those Saudi royalties. And you know what? The Iranians are no better. In that country, women can't even attend football matches. Women can't go to football matches. So let's just say that all the oil from this part of the world is not the extra virgin kind. No, it's the dirty kind. So anyways, back to the missile attacks. They were done using what appears to be Iranian technology fired by Houthi militia in Yemen. But Iran has denied any involvement. But you know, Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims hate each other more than life itself. Trump says he's just instructed his Secretary of the Treasury to substantially increase sanctions on Iran. Uh, I don't know what that means. They've already got sanctions. What's more? Uh, like what now? No more Netflix for them. Yes, no more Pornhub for the Iranians. Actually, this is great news because what it means is that the alternative of dropping nuclear bombs on Tehran is off the table. 
Anyway, Saudi's latest upright, update suggests that the disruption of last Saturday's attacks will only have a limited impact on oil production and exports. So the oil price has been going back down again. Oh, happy days. Because if Saudi production is back to normal, we can all go back to our gas guzzling ways. These are the fucks that make it easy for us to go on doing that. This climate change thing that we're all so busy with at the moment. The future is rosy. We can get back to working on our own new 21st century Carnian pluvial episode. Fantastic. Well done.